say, come before. Come before his presence with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise and be thankful unto him. And be thankful unto him for he is worthy, worthy of all praise. Come before his presence with thanksgiving. Enter into his glory. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your consistency towards us. Father, this is the last year, last Sabbath for the last year. And some of us, we had a low year, a mid-year, and a high year. But nevertheless, we had a year when some people had a week, when some people had one day, and some people had a few minutes, and they passed away. So, Father, we came here to worship you. And we thank you so much, and we have great expectation. But we're not the only one who has great expectation. You have one. That someone today will deliver their hearts and their minds to you so we could be transformed. We thank you so much. Take total control. And we ask you for your spirit, of, for your spirit to transform us and to change us so we could be extremely prepared and set and ready for your soon coming. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody says, Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath, Seventh day Adventist Church of the Oranges. All right, let's do that again. Happy Sabbath, Church. I was excited this week because I had uh, one of the uh, most outstanding sorrel drinks I've ever tasted. And it was a good week for me. But yesterday we, we went down to the, to the basement of our house and I noticed that there was a leak uh, coming from one of the copper pipes. And, and so uh, 
And so the devil tried to mess with my sorrow high, but I didn't let him. So I'm still giving thanks for what God has done for me. So when I tell you happy Sabbath, I'm happy to be in church on the Sabbath. So happy Sabbath, Church of God. You know, there, there's much to be thankful for. We've come a long way. We may have lost some of our soldiers over the year, but we have much to be thankful for. I want to touch on briefly some, uh, some highlights. I want to emphasize, please look in your bulletin. Uh, the, the, the announcements in the bulletin are, are listed, but let me touch on, on a few things briefly. Uh, so, so first of all, tomorrow evening at 4.30, we are asking that all of you come out. 4.30 tomorrow, we will have a praise service, we'll have communion, and then we will follow that with an agape feast. So 4.30, what's happening tomorrow at 4.30? We will have a what? A praise service. And then we will have communion, and we will follow that with an agape feast where we're going to eat some, uh, some delicious grapes and cheese. All right, so, so I'm going to ask media to pull up that slide for me. Starting, and if you can't see that, I'll, I'll read it for you. Starting January 1st, January 1st starts our 40 days of prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting is critical for this church because we want to do some special things in 2018. Are you with me? So in 2018, we're going to continue to live the grace-filled life and, and share the grace-filled life. We're going to try to do it better by the grace of God. And so the question is, what's the point? Why do we need to engage in this 40 days of fasting and prayer? My answer to you is, is twofold. First, Anything of significance was not done by an individual, but was done by a group of people who came together with focus and with determination. And so if we think about it, what would happen in this church if all of us came, came together, focused in prayer and in fasting? Now, the fasting you may engage in may be different from someone else's fasting. Some people will engage in, in following the prescribed plan that we have on the church website. Others will say, I will not engage in any chocolate for 40 days. I will not watch TV for 40 days. Whatever it is, the most important part of this is the prayer aspect that we're searching for and that we're seeking. So what would happen in this church if we as a people significantly came together in prayer over 40 days? So what's happening here? So go to the church website. You can use your smartphones. Go to the church website. Uh, orangenj orangenjsda.org slash 40 days and you'll see the full detail on what the plans are for the next 40 days. Uh, there's a prayer line that we will be using. Everyone, please write this down. Take the number for the prayer line, 605-468-8009, uh, code 594 817 at 5.30 noon and at 6 p.m., you can choose a time and please dial in and participate. We're also asking you to identify a prayer partner because anything of significance happens in groups, not by the individual. The individual can pray, but when we pray as a group, change can take place. And then finally, I want to highlight the devotional that we're going to use. The devotional we're using is, is an app. So we're trying to do something different. In years past, we've purchased a book and I don't, think we, I don't think 250 books were circulated to the congregation. So what we're trying to do is use the technology that we have. So there's an app called the YouVersion Bible. You probably already have it on your phone. If you search in the plan section of the YouVersion Bible uh, for restart, stepping out in faith, you will find the devotional that we're going to focus on. That's one way. The easier way as well is you go to the church website, orangenjsda.org slash 40 days. You can do that right now with your phone and you'll see uh, the link for the very devo devotional that we will be focused on for the 40 days. And for those of you without a smartphone, we even printed copies, all right? So we're trying to make this as, as inclusive as possible. So if you don't have a uh, smartphone, you can see me or you can go directly to the church office and we have a printed copy for you, all right? We want everyone involved in studying and praying together. So finally, we have also set up a text option. 
If you want to receive alerts as to different things that are happening here at the church, especially throughout these 40 days, Welcome to, to the, the Seventh-day Adventist, Adventist Church of the Oranges. Today is our youth day, and it's all about finding strength in numbers. It's also the final Sabbath in 2017. Wow, and although it is cold outside, we are thrilled that you have chosen to worship with us today. There is nothing quite like joining with people in a sense of unity and the single purpose of bringing praise and honor to our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Psalms 133 verse 1, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren of your home. Thank you for choosing to worship with us online. We hope that you will be blessed. To our regular members, what would church be without you? Now, we want to take a moment to extend a very warm welcome to everyone who is here for the first time. Could you stand? <laughs> Whether you're just having a look or searching out a place to worship, we're delighted to have you here. To give you some idea of what we're all about, we're about Jesus Christ, we're about the people and relationships. We hope to cultivate and grow meaningful and positive relationships between one another. But most importantly, we want to go farther by getting and growing in relationship with God. We would like to encourage you to fill out our communication cards that you'll find in the bulletin you got when you came in. Just write your name and email or phone number on there, since we'd love to stay in touch with you. You will also receive a special gift from our pastor. We pray that each and every one of you will have a blessed day. Let's greet each other in Jesus' name. Let us be somebody in Jesus' name. Won't you tell them that you love them in Jesus' name? Tell them we can work together in Jesus' name. Everybody's fine.
Amen. And because Jesus loves us, we're just going to continue in song by singing to God be the glory. Great things he has done. Hymn 341. I ask that you please stand. so good to us. He's been so great to us. And since we said praise the Lord to God be the glory right now, we're just going to tell God that we believe that he's a God of miracles. He can do everything exceedingly abundantly above anything that we could ever ask or think. This might be a new song to some of you, but it's very easy to learn. It just says, Jehovah, you, I trust in you. I believe in you because he is a God of miracles. Amen. your hands. You can stand up if you want to, but we're just going to praise the Lord this morning. Say Jehovah. Jehovah, you, I trust, I trust. 
trust in you, oh Lord, oh Lord, Jehovah, you, I trust, I trust in you, in you, say I believe, I believe, I believe you, I trust, I trust in you, in you, oh Lord, oh Lord, Jehovah, you, I trust. trials, all our problems, because God is going to fix it for us, all right? So long, bye-bye, so long, bye-bye, goodbye to my pain and my sorrows, so long, bye-bye, it's that simple, say so long, so long, bye-bye. Goodbye to my pain. Bye bye. Goodbye to my trouble. Bye bye. Goodbye fear. Bye bye. So long. Bye bye. Hey. 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 So long. Bye bye. Goodbye fear. Bye bye. You ain't welcome here. Bye bye. Hey. So long. Bye bye. Hey. So long. Bye bye. Yeah. So long. Bye bye. Hey. So long. You are the God. You are the God of miracles. And you are the God of many you wonders. You are the God of wonders. You are the God of powerful. I believe. 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 Goodbye to your pain, goodbye to your heartache, 
Goodbye to your trouble. Here we go. So long. Bye bye. Hey, so long. Bye bye. Hey, so long. Bye bye. Say you are the God. You are the God of miracles. And you are the God of you wonders. You are the God of wonders. You are the God of power. For I believe. Yes, I do. I believe. And because we know he can do it, he's done it before, every day in our lives, waking us up, putting us in our right mind. Um, there's a lot of people who don't have this opportunity to just live and breathe and open their eyes and move and eat. And just for that, we just have to say, Lord, you are good. He's been better to us than we could ever be to ourselves. So this song just says, Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. And I can't praise him enough. You know, if I wanted to, I couldn't. I couldn't even describe all the things that he's done to me up until this point, till this morning. So right here, we're just going to praise him and say, Lord, you are good and you are so good. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I try, cause you've been so good. I have to say it in, cause he's been. You've been so good. Say, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than I can't praise you enough. I can't praise you enough. Even if I tried, I can't. I like, owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Even if I
I remember when it was testimony time at my church and we would always have these older ladies that they would get up and they would start out singing and it would be this song you could tell that was coming from their soul and coming from the the pain and it was coming from the joy and the triumph that they were having that weekend and then they would get to a point where there weren't even words coming out of their mouth anymore. It was just be moaning. And when I was younger, I didn't understand what exactly was going on. But now I look back at that time and I realize that that moment, that was their prayer going up. And I didn't understand what was going on, but that's okay because they were speaking to Jesus. They were speaking to God. And he took those moans and the Holy Spirit interpreted those moans. And it was like sweet incense going up to God's nostrils. So I'm telling you today, if you have your moaning that you want to bring up, if there's something that you can't even speak, but it's in your heart, that it's in your mind, that it can't even come out your mouth, I'm asking you to please come forward. Bring it to Jesus, because we know that he can take care of it. We know that he is the greatest. We know that he's the one that created us. So please come forward. let me go, and we lay our burdens down at your throne. I lay it all. God, my Savior, I pray, Father, that as I kneel before you today, Father, that you would first forgive me of my sins. I pray, Father, that you would cleanse me, remove from me what is not right, 
cast it out into that ocean, Father, that I would no longer have a desire to seek it. I pray, Father, that the words that are coming out of my mouth, Father, that they not be my own words, that they not be my own thoughts, Father. I pray, Father, that the Spirit will anoint my words so that I will speak what you would have me to speak. Father, as I intercede on those who are kneeling before you and those who are online watching, who are seeking an answer, Father, who are seeking healing, Father, I'm already going to say thank you and praise you in advance. Because I know that, Father, with the faith that we believe and put it for you, before you, Father, that you will heal us. I know, Father, that whatever we're going through, Father, that it is done in a way so that it will bring glory to you. So I pray for strength. I pray that we would have strength to weather the storm, Father. I pray, Father, that we would have the understanding of what is going on around us, Father. I pray that we would have the knowledge so that as things are going on, Father, when it's over, we will be able to stand and give our testimony. We will be able to strengthen one another. We will be able to lift one another up, Father. I pray for those kneeling here today, Father, who have silent things that they can't even speak about, things that are so hurtful that they can't even murmur those words right now, Father. But we know, we know that they have silent prayers that go up to you, Father. And I'm praying that I know that right now your answer for them, it may not be yes. Your answer for them right now would be maybe wait, or it may be not right now, or it may be even no. But I am asking, Father, that they would be able to hear your voice, that they would be able to hear your sweet whisper as you speak to them, that they would get a peace that would surpass all understanding, Father. And I pray, Father, for the leaders in this church, that we know that being a leader in this day and time is not easy, that we know, Father, that it is never easy. But we know, unlike those leaders who are out there in the world, Father, that we are connected to you. And we know, Father, that as long as we connected to you and that we are carrying out what you would have us to do, that all things are possible. That we would walk the path that you would have us to walk. I pray for our youth. That we are struggling in ways that others may not even understand in a society that information is coming at us from all angles where we bring it in and we interpret it, Father, but, and we have this understanding, but Father, we are praying that you would give us discernment. Yes. Praying, Father, that in situations in a world where everything doesn't seem black and white anymore, where it just seems variations of gray, Father, we're asking that you would clear it up for us. We're asking that you would give us the ability to stand when it seems like we're on sinking sand, Father. We pray that we will walk out when we will be standing on the rock that is you, Father. I also pray, Father, for those who are, who are sick. I ask, Father, that you would heal them, but only to your will, Father. For anything that is done in our life, Father, I pray that it would be for your will only and how you would have it to be. Pray for the speaker and his family, that you would continue to be a moving force in his life, that you would anoint his lips and his mouth, Father, that the words that have come out, that they will be words from you, straight from you. I pray for his wife and for his daughter, Father, that they will continue to bring the ministry that they are bringing. Pray for the musicians. I pray for this community, that we will be a light, that we would be something that they can look back and say that they didn't want anything from us, that all they wanted to give us was love. I thank you, Father, not because I'm worthy, but because of your mercy and your grace. In Jesus Christ's name I pray, amen.
Good afternoon, church. My name is Faith Dixon, and um, I'm the youth leader at Church of the Oranges. And so I'm coming before you today to bring you um, a report of the past year. So for this year, at the beginning of the year, we had our um, Global Youth Day. So Global Youth Day is pretty much it's a day that's celebrated worldwide by all um, Seventh-day Adventist churches all, all over. And it's a day which the youth go out of the church and they're, they, um, they're discerning. So we go out and we perform different acts of community services. And this year, we had over 50 youth that did community services. Um, and we intentionally, this year, we kept it local. So pretty much every place that, for the most part, every place that we could serve, we was in walking distance of the church. So we visited the nursing homes. We gave out free loads of laundry. We gave out free gas, groceries. And one of the things I noticed about that is that it was a ripple effect. When we were giving it out, first people were a little hesitant, like, um, what do you want from it? And they, they wouldn't even take like the loads of laundry. So it was at one point we almost had to, um, I wanna say force it on them. And before they realized, they was like, oh, there's, there's nothing, you don't want anything. And then they were like, oh, well then tell me more about what's going on. Tell me more about your church. And we would find also, not only with that, that people would go out and when we would give gas, they were like, oh, well, thank you. And then they would come back and donate money. Well, let me pay for someone else's gas. And also this year, we had the Youth Week of Prayer, where we focused on 12 to 28 fundamental beliefs. And we went and applied like a, um, a real world take on those, on the fundamental beliefs, on what we believe. Um, a youth retreat we had in August. Um, the theme was also where we carried on with strength in numbers at Camp Shiloh. And it was this year we decided to do on a holistic approach where we approach different things, where we learn about being better financial stewards. We learned about sharing God via different medias like video, um, via talk. And we also learned about um, one of the ultimate stories of strength in numbers where the story of Gideon where God didn't need much to make a lot happen. And we also had that um, the Sunday morning we went out and did um, a mountain hike, um, which was interesting because when we went out, the woman said, gave us a warning on what to do if we saw any bears. So that was, that was good. Um, this year, we also did feeding the homeless. We'll go out to Penn Station on Friday nights once a month and we go out to feed the homeless. This year, we fed over 300 um, but we fed over 300 people. Um, and also, thank you. Keep praying for us. Um, also, we have our young adult small group where we talk about different topics that um, we talked about homosexuality, we talked about identity, um, we talked about sexual harassment outside and in the church. We talked, um, we did the study of the book of Proverbs. So, Different topics, we're going through small group setting, we talk about different things, but at the end of the day, no matter the topic, we always bring it back to God and how we approach it as Christians, how we should view it. Um, we had the, a bonfire where we discussed a different topic, and last night we had our cafe night upstairs in the fellowship hall. We did spoken word, music, Christian rap. Um, we did a performance art that was inspired by our testimonies. And as a matter of fact, um, in one of the stories, we, as she was doing the art, as she was drawing, we were having a testimony time. So she would take the different testimonies and the words she was hearing. And it's a picture of a woman with a, um, with a curly afro. So she would write the different words. The strings of hair became the words that she was hearing that was coming for the testimony. So we'll have that up in the fellowship hall if you wanna see it later. And then for today, um, and as mentioned earlier, our theme is strength in numbers. So last, um, after last night, today we're having lunch after 
the second service, after this service, and then later tonight we're having our game night social um, with Minute to Win It, and if you have not played, it is a lot, a lot of fun. And when I tell you it's, it's ages all over that's competing, I mean, as long as you can breathe, you got a chance to win. So we invite you to come up, and that's at 6 p.m. today, up in the fellowship, in the fellowship hall. And um, lastly, before I introduce the speaker, I want to ask that the um, Youth Council, if y'all will all stand up. And I just want to thank you for all your hard work over the past um, two years. Um, so that's not all we, it's, I think someone probably getting ready for the lunch also. So thank you for all your work. Um, now I would like to introduce our speaker, um, Pastor Gazmir Valsini. Now, when we, I told a story earlier um, in first service, how when we were looking for a speaker, um, Clint and um, O'Randy and Elvis went to um, a different, to a Pathfinder day, and they found, they texted me immediately, they was like, we have a speaker for you. I'm like, what? It was like dynamic, they were like, he was great. I was like, really? They were like, he broke down the word and put in all different terms, and they were like, and he had, there was like visual illustrations, and I was like, oh man, yes, okay, let's do it. So we got, um, Clint reached out to him, and we have him, and at first service, I'm great speaker. Breaks it down to a level that um, anyone can understand. Um, charismatic, dynamic, captivating speaker, um, down to earth, warm humor, and, and it's something that you can tell that he reaches out, that it appeals to both young, that he appeals to both young and old. And one thing I noticed in my conversations with him is that he is extremely humble and just so grateful that God called him to be of service to him. Um, and he's also spoken different venues in the United States and abroad um, at both Christian and public schools, churches of all denominations, um, youth council retreats at the UN for religious and political political council, and soon he'll be pursuing a master's degree in pastoral ministry from Andrews University. He is married to the former Diane Alexandra, and there, if she could please stand, if she is, oh, there she is, yes. Um, and also, um, and their parents to vivacious young lady, Navia, did I say it? Uh, Navay, uh, Nave, 14 years old, and his words acting like a 30 year old. <laughs> um, and, and she's been a gift to them. Currently, he's the youth minister, Bible worker, and elder for the historic Hebron SDA church, French church, and he's assigned to the youth church. And also, he's at the NEC Franco-Haitian Youth Federation Chaplain. His personal message from his heart to yours is for you to open your hearts and minds, along with him, to experience the transformative power of God's word so his character will be restored within us so we can finally go home. He will be speaking after the music recitation. Thank you. Today, church, today is a high day in Israel, amen? Because God's people, are, they are the right place at the right time, doing the right thing. Uh, we just pause briefly in our program to do a special presentation. Um, at this time, I would like to call forward my team, uh, Faith, please come back. Uh, Elvis, please come forward. Kellon, if you're here, please come up. Um, Akita. Everyone is here. Great, great, great. Um, over the past three, three, two years, three years, we've been 
blessed to um, be led by the Holy Spirit, of course, and um, the leadership of this individual. Um, this individual is humble, um, performed outstanding over the past few years. Um, services were dedicated and very committed. Um, the driving force, as you can see behind me, uh, this was the uh, picture we were talking about last night in our cafe night um, with the hair and all the motivation that she wrote in the hair. Um, I was honored and you know blessed to be working with this individual. Uh, she motivated all of us and um, it's only right. It's only right for us to make this presentation to uh, Margaret Faith Dixon. I encourage you all to stand and put your hands together for our outstanding work. Uh, it, is a, it is a plaque in form of a flame. It represents the fire that she held at the mountaintop so all of us can see and draw closer to her as we draw closer to Christ. Faith, I hope that you will hold this plaque and this flame and the fire within you will continue to burn even as we progress and continue this beautiful uh, ministry in the Church of Yards. Also, there's flowers. And uh, this time I would like to call Kellon uh, to just to say a few words uh, before they sing. Praise God, praise God. It's been indeed a pleasure serving under faith the past couple of years. Um, and I know that going forward as I continue, I have big shoes to fill. Um, but I'm glad that she isn't going anywhere. She's still a part of the team. Um, God has been so great to the young people and every day I see growth and I see God's presence manifested. I see his glory manifested in, in the young people of this church. And we have a mission to go forth and to, to, to tell the world about his goodness, to get the world ready for his coming. Um, behind us we have a a, a drawing that um, last night during our cafe night, one of our, the young people, Yasmin, she she drew this and dedicated it to to our our fearless leader. Under um, here's we see some. She wrote some of the words. I don't know if you can see, but some of those characteristics like faith, love, and beauty, fearless, grace, and power. You know and those things that embodies faith and we're we're so grateful to have her and we just are so 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 grateful for her um faith thank you so much for your service i just i just want to say thank you <laughs> Praise the Lord. We'll not continue with our service. God that walks over the earth 
searching for a heart that is desperate and longing for a child that will give him their all, give it all, he wants it all. And he says, love me, love me with your life now, he wants it all today. it all today. Bow down, let go of your idols. He wants it all today. He wants it all today. He wants it all today. He wants it all. And there's a God who walks over the earth. He's searching for a heart that is desperate and longing for a child that will Sabbath, everybody. Amen. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to. Turn to the person next to you and say, it's good to be seen. Then to be viewed. It's good to see you. That there wasn't a casket here for you. But that you're alive. My sister, it's good to see you. There was no casket there for you because you're alive. So it's good to be seen. Turn to the person next to you and say, it's good to be seen. Then to be viewed. Now I want you to put your right hand up, your left hand up, and just clap and praise the Lord for that. <laughs> Amen. I didn't think I needed to cheerlead you, cheerlead you for that. Because God has been better than good. Hey. Listen, I lost it in that song. That's one of my favorite songs my, my, my wife would tell you. And just the worship this morning was, was amazing. Amen? I want to change my membership. Amen? I want to praise God for Sister Faith and her leadership. Amen? Put your hands together for Sister Faith and the whole youth council. Um, one thing I've learned in leadership myself is that everything rise and falls off leadership. Everything. And I learned something this year, or actually last year, from a Methodist minister, Dr. Alfred Sylvester, who said that if greatness is obtainable, that means, I'm sorry, if excellence is obtainable, that means greatness is not enough. Are you with me, everybody? If excellence is obtainable, that means greatness is not enough. And that 
segues right into what I said this morning in first service, that this church possesses top-of-the-line Christ-led professionalism. This church, Angel, <laughs> possesses professionalism. Now, listen, you're supposed to be praising God for that. You know why? Why in the world that you're going to wait to go to a stadium to see Beyonce and expect professionalism from her? At one time, my brother who's sitting right with me, because you're getting it with me, Beyonce forgot to eat for three days because she was so locked in. She was so locked into her performance. And when we're in God's house, we can't give God leftovers because he didn't die as a leftover. He gave us his best, which is himself. Amen? Amen. I want to praise God for Elder Clint Brown from when I first met him when I was preaching at another church in New Jersey. I praise God for him. Amen? And to your elders here, and I want to praise God for the musicians and for the ushers and for the deacons and those who are part of the parking lot team. I told First Service this, that worship starts from the parking lot. Ushers, worship starts from the door. I'm sure your pastor told you this. Because it will make or break the experience here. You can't wait for a six foot five preacher like me, amen, by faith. Six foot five, amen. In heaven, by faith. <laughs> can I, one more thing, one more time. Can I have everybody smile for a second? Smile. Amen. Lastly, I want to give honor to, your, to our senior pastor. The reason why I say our is because Dr. Errol Stoddard, I met him about two years ago through Dr. Stephen Cowher, one of my other mentors. But I've been following Dr. Errol Stoddard for years when he was at Miracle Temple. And he's one of 10 senior pastors of our movement that I extremely value. I value extremely. And not just because he can preach. You know what I've learned? Preaching is so overrated. You know why? Denzel Washington, if I gave him one of my sermons, he'll baptize 10,000 people. Why? Because he's a great actor. You get that next week. Dr. Errol Stoddard is not just a great preacher and teacher. He is a man of worship. And I pray that you appreciate that. And he's a leader. He likes things to be effective. I pray for him and his wife and his family. Who is, she's not your first lady, everybody. Sister Stoddard is your only lady. Amen? Because when you say first lady, that suggests there's a second or third someone in the Allegheny East somewhere. So there's only one lady, only one lady. Amen? And I'm going to segue there to my beautiful girlfriend who happens to be my wife. Amen? My beautiful wife, Diane. If you wave or stand, and she said, I'm going to wave. I'm going to behave. Amen? Praise the Lord. I don't have much time, even though I was given much time, but I, the Lord has a specific word for someone. I want you to point to your head, everybody. Everybody point to your head. And say, Lord, speak to my mind. Amen. One more thing. We have great friends who are here. Uh, Tere and Amanda, Kurt and Sandy, uh, Natalie and Courtney. Amen. Wave your hands or you can stand. Amen. From New York. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together for our friends. Amen. Turn with me, turn with me to the book of Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13, verses 33 to 37. Mark chapter 13, verses 33 to 37. And also, while you're going there, I am extremely impressed, and I celebrate the kids of this church for 13th Sabbath. Amen? Amen. I'm not, I'm not a creftal dollar. <laughs> so the reason why I said that is I didn't go into the office after first service so I can be received praise and worship. I came back out here because I want to support the kids, and I sat there with my wife, and we were like, wow, these kids were speaking with authority, amen? amen. That speaks of the leadership here when I praise God for them and your family and the parents of those kids, the family. Uh, Mark chapter 13, verses 33, do you have it with you? I'm not sure if you have a cell phone. I know it's 2018, basically, um, um, but I pray that if you pull out the Bible on your cell phone, that you turn off that phone on airplane mode, Amen so that you won't be tempted to receive a text or look at it, amen? Airplane mode and go into that Bible app. Um, 
Um, I pray that you use an Apple phone because droids are not of the Lord. Praise the Lord. No, it's not. If you ever seen that little green droid emblem with a little blood coming out of it, it's a demonic spirit. That elder get an oil will cast it out. Amen. The reason why is because there will be apples in heaven. Praise the Lord. Amen. Right, my brother? There'll be no droids in the kingdom, all right? There'll be apples, fruits. No, no chicken, no, no turkey, but there'll be apples. Amen? Apples. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Mark chapter 13. Let's get into the teaching today, verses 33 to 37. Amen. Or when you found it, say, I, I have it. When you have it, say, I have it. Come on, let's read together. The Bible says, verse 33, it says, Take ye, take ye what? Watch and pray. Wait, 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 wait. For ye know not when. Now, let, let me stop right here for a second, Bible readers. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 22 not to add or take away anything of the word. So I'm not going to add, but I'm going to imply something. So it says here, verse 33, take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when your time is. Somebody say, my time. So let's read it again, verse 33. Take ye heed, watch and what? For ye, not, ye know not when my time is. Ah, we're going somewhere. Verse 34, for the who, everybody? Donald Trump? The Bible says, for the who, everybody? For the Son of Man is as a man taking what? A far journey who left his house and gave what? authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the what? The porter, the watcher, the servant to what? To what? Uh, come on everybody. Somebody say watch. watch. To watch. Verse 35. Watch ye therefore for ye what? When the master of the house comes or cometh at evening or even or at midnight or at cock crowing or in the what? Verse 36, less coming what? Suddenly he finds you and snoring. Verse 37, and what I say unto you, I say unto what? Somebody say all. all. I feel like preaching. Somebody say watch. watch. The teaching this afternoon is entitled Insomnia. <laughs> insomnia. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the total sufficiency that we receive in our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. I simply ask you for one thing. I'm sorry, for one person. And that is your spirit. He knows what he does. The first gift of the Spirit is not to give us gifts in terms of knowing our spiritual gifts. For our brothers and sisters in other churches, the first gift of the Holy Spirit is not to speak in a language, unknown language. The first gift of your Spirit is to convict us of sin, righteousness and judgment. And in verse 13 of John 16, Father, you said, that after that, you guide us into all truth. And truth is not just a thing. It is a person. John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, stand in line, no one can cut because Jesus is the only way to you, Father. So, Father, thank you for reminding me all the time that preaching does not exclude the preacher from perishing. But I need this word as much as everyone does, if not even more, in Jesus' name. One thing, Father, one more time, we ask you for forgiveness of our sins, and we ask you to evict every demonic spirit right now. You have been given an eviction notice, in Jesus' name, amen. In Mark chapter 13, Mark is part of, can, can I come down? Is that okay? Okay. I'll come back and forth. But 
Mark, can you see this tall, handsome boy guy here? Amen. He said, yes, we can, Mama. Mark, my brother, is part of a three persons group, doo-wop group called the Synoptics. You get where I'm going. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are part of this group. Use your, your, uh, the imagery or the analogy. They're part of this group called the Synoptics. The what, everybody? In other words, the Synoptic Gospel uh, comprises of three books, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, not John. John went solo on his album because John begins to bring the perspective of Jesus, the divine aspect of who Jesus is. Are you with me, everybody? But Matthew, I'm just a teaching now, Matthew, Mark, and Luke is part of the group where Matthew sings soprano, Mark sings alto, and Luke sings tenor. And they sing doo-wop, 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 present worship team. They sing under the group called the Synoptics. Why? The synoptic gospel, because teachings, the teachings, history teachings according to the canon, according to the word of God, is that Matthew, Mark, and Luke share pretty much the same, not pretty much, they share a lot of the same stories, but with a little bit of difference in each book. The little difference would be, was that Dr. Lee, Lee Croft Green? God bless you, sir, and your family. Amen. It gives you a little difference of uh, Matthew singing soprano. Mark singing what? Out. Come on, teachers, students. Alto. I'm going somewhere. And L Luke is singing what? Like Dr. Green. Amen? <laughs> but the sermons are basic, the sermon's basically done. You know why? Because here's the thing. Mark is the book that the Lord allowed me to choose to perfectly date the title of this message, like a prom date. Mark's, Mark chapter 13 dates the title. The title of the sermon is what, everybody? Insomnia. Now watch this. Now, let me give you a historical background. Jesus, in Mark chapter 24, Matthew chapter 24, Luke 21, Mark chapter 13, Jesus now is on the Mount of Olives. And what, everybody? The Mount of Olives with the disciples. And they just came from, in Mark, especially, I like uh, Matthew 24, right? The, the chapter before 23, Jesus is having a, a little battle, like in board meeting. <laughs> Hallelujah. They have a, you get that next week. They had a little battle with the, 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 the leaders of the day. They're going back and forth with the woes, right? So they're in the Mount of Olives, and the disciples come. They say, Jesus, Jesus, look at our temple. You know how we do it for camp meeting and when there's a new building. Look, conference, there's a new building. And Jesus says, there will not be what? One, you know this chapter, one stone left. Now, we know that was literal because that happened in AD 70, right? Remember? When the destruction of what? Jerusalem. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. My style of preaching and teaching is just like your pastor. I don't have any time to preach anymore. I am a teacher. You know why? Because we don't have any more time left. As a preacher, especially to, I, I, I serve notice to all my fellow young preachers. I hoop. I get excited. Hey, God, I, well, bless you and do see that. I can hoop, but here's the thing. After you hoop, has there been anything left over? When somebody calls you and says, have you learned something? Oh, I just learned Jesus died for me. Well, we knew that over 2,000 years now. My role as a preacher is to only confirm what you've been studying throughout the week. I'm not, a chef, I'm not a chef. I'm not even a sous chef. I'm only a waiter. And a waiter can only do two things, serve and take orders. And so watch this. They're in the Mount of Olives, Mark, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. And they said, Jesus, look at our temple. He says that there will not be what one stone left upon you now. I like the rhythm in Matthew 24 and Luke 21 when Jesus specifically begins to break down the signs of the what, everybody? Come on, come on, come on. The signs of what? The signs of the times. He begins to declare in Matthew chapter 24, let no man what? Deceive you. Now, here's the thing, here's the thing. If you wanted to know the weather of the week, you would go to weather.com, you would go on your, your local news station, and you'll begin to see, okay, it's going to be snowing this day, it might be 10 degrees this day, you know, whatever, whatever. You'll begin to see 
the forecast. So what, everybody? Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21 is a prophetic what? Forecast. Somebody say prophetic. prophetic. Not pathetic. Prophetic forecast which declares the signs of the coming of who? Jesus the Christ. Yeshua the Christ, right? So watch this. He begins to say Matthew 24. I'm going to stay right here for a second, but they all, like I told you, the synoptic group, it connects. He begins to declare to them in Matthew 24. He says, I see you guys are getting excited about the temple, the temple. You forgot I'm the temple, number one. Number two, okay, he says, watch this. They come to him and says, can you tell us the time of the end? He says, listen, the signs of the time. He says, let no man, what? Deceive you. And, you know, deception is not only outside the church. It is really inside the church, too. When young men are trying to get with women, deception. And God says, do not steal. <laughs> not only their bodies, but their emotions. Deception is happening not only from the, from the pew, but from the pulpit, where preachers speak one thing, but they live something totally different. Deception. What else did he say? Did he say? He says there'll be what? Pestilences. And what, everybody? There'll be what? Let me go there real quick. Matthew chapter 24. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It makes sense to open the word of God. I'm going to be done soon. Don't worry. Verse, two, verse 5, it says, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the what? Verse, 20, verse 5 of 20, Matthew 24, and, and shall deceive many. Verse 6, And they shall be what? They shall be what? Wars and rumors of wars. Now, here's the thing. Stop right there for a second. Years ago, my brother... If you and I had a problem, I'll punch you right in your mouth. Well, I'm from Brooklyn originally, right? From Jersey, so what's really good? I'll punch you in your mouth. <laughs> he got muscles. <laughs> but it went from bro my brother fighting to now, it went to, you know, putting out swords on tops of horses and, and stabbing people. That's, that's how the timeline of war took place. It went from hand-to-hand -hand combat to knives to guns to now wars of fort where you could just press a button and a whole sea line will be evaporated. But rumors of wars, especially between, you know, it's hinged right now, Dr. K Dr. Green, between U.S. and Korea, North Korea. There's a hinge, there's a going on, right? There's a, there's a battle going on. And watch this, rumors of wars not only in the world, but there's rumors of war in churches. When I want to be conference president, and I want to be executive secretary, and I want to be Sabbath school superintendent, and I want to be youth director, and I want to be, there's rumors of wars. There's not only rumors of wars in church, but there's rumors of wars in the home where husbands and wives sleep in different bedrooms. But they want positions in church. Where kids are arguing with parents, and parents arguing with kids. Rumors of wars. But there's not only rumors of wars in the world, church, or in the home, there's rumors of wars within yourself. It's World War I, there's World War II, and there's something called World War Me. He says there's rumors of wars, and there's also what? Pestilences, cancers, and STDs, and AIDS, and all these different types of sicknesses. There'll be earthquakes in diverse places. About three weeks ago, there was an earthquake in D.C. And when I see all of this family, all it does is tell me or declare to me that Jesus did not lie. Now, those who are watching it online, I don't know who you are. Let me tell you something. God is saying today that I am coming. I'm coming. Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. But one thing I love about Matthew is as great adventists, we go to verse 14. And this gospel, come on, say it with me shall be preached in all the world as a what? As a witness, and then the end shall come. But whenever I read that chapter, I skip verse 13, I go to 14, and I back up to 13. Why? Because verse 13 says, but he that endures to the end shall be saved. Here's the reason why. Many people are called, but few are chosen, but only the remnant endure. When I say in remnant, I'm not talking about the church per se. I'm talking about those who experience insomnia. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Mark chapter 13, Luke 21, Matthew 24. The Bible declares, the Bible declares, hey, the Bible declares, I am coming soon. So in Mark chapter 13, perfectly, it dates the title of this message. 
He begins to declare to them. He says, watch. He's sleeping. Wake him up. Watch. Perfect. Watch because you do not know the time that the master is coming. Now, I'm not declaring this message to spiritually scare you because I'm not a church cop. There's two parts of the police department of church. You have the conservative detectives where you got to eat your way to be saved. You have to have a long skirt to be saved. But they have a nasty spirit. But then you have the SWAT team liberals where you can do whatever you want and Jesus just loves me. That means you present grace as being cheap. So both sides of the field are not without guilt. I call myself a conserval, balanced. <laughs> Somebody say insomnia. So Mark chapter 13, specifically my brother, connects with the title insomnia. Now insomnia means, well I'm not sure who has been diagnosed. Anybody brave enough to just wave your hands? The mic's gonna go, I mean the camera's gonna go on you, praise the Lord. If anybody been uh, 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 diagnosed with the, the disorder, sleeping disorder called insomnia, anybody? Okay, well insomnia, you said you raised your, you, I thought you raised your hand. I was like, man, you're like seven years old. No, this young man here. <laughs> no, I thought it was you. <laughs> I thought it was you. Nice bow tie. Here's the teaching, insomnia. Somebody say insomnia. Insomnia means, or the definition of insomnia is the inability to sleep. Or sleeplessness. Watch this. About six years ago, I got called to uh, do an event on a Sunday morning. It was scheduled to be for 10 o'clock. What time, everybody? It was going to be financially rewarding. Praise the Lord. Amen. I received that. Hey. Financial freedom. Come on, man. We got to be uh, free Christians financially. Amen? So here we go. It was for what time, everybody? Yeah. 10 o'clock. Now, the way I set up my alarm most times, amen, is I'll do, I set it up for 7 o'clock, then I'll do, uh, sorry, 7.30, then I'll do 30-minute, uh, then I'll do like two or three 15-minute um, 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 come on, help me. Not snooze, connectors, meaning a time frame. I'm sorry, time frame. So my appointment for was what, what everybody? 10 o'clock. I was living in Long Island, and the, the event was in Brooklyn, which was, you know, it was a Sunday morning. It was going to be too, too much traffic, so I knew uh, it would take about 25, maybe tops, 30 minutes to get there. And so I, my alarm went off at what? 7.30. Somebody say 7.30. Now, those who have been blessed with an Apple phone, I said blessed, amen? Blessed with Apple phone, hallelujah. We just talked about it before. Droids, just pray and fast. The Lord will provide. Droids. So, you know, those who have an Apple phone, you know the Apple alarm is very annoying. So at 7.30, it went off. And I woke up, and what did I do? I pressed snooze. Because I purposefully, of the green, Dr. Green, I set 30 minute to 15 minute intervals because I needed some more. <laughs> Have mercy, Lord. 7.30 went off. Eh, eh. What time was my engagement? 10 o'clock. Eh, eh. It went off. I snoozed. 30 minutes from 7.30 is what time, everybody? 8 o'clock. It went off. On time. You know, see, you know, sometimes we're not on time, but church. Sometimes it's not on time. Well, this church is on time, praise the Lord. But the alarm is on time. It went off at 8 o'clock. Eh, 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 eh. What did I do, everybody? Snooth. I told you 30 minute to 15 minute intervals. And watch this. At 8.15, it went off what again? Somebody say, it went off again. Eh, eh, eh. What did I do? I snooze. 8.15 plus 15 minutes is what, everybody? 8.30. 
At this time, when it went off at 8.30, I went, eh, eh. I got up from my bed. I snoozed it. I went to the bathroom. And then I had the nerve to go back into the bed. <laughs> and I took, you know, we do this all the time, right? At that time, I was wild. I didn't get up and have devotion, right? Whew. I got up, and what made it worse, when I came back from the bathroom, you know how we do. I'm, I'm on the phone, laying down, and then I fell asleep, and the phone fell on my face. You know, that happened to a lot of us. It fell on, the, on my face, and then I put it next to me. At 8.30, 15 minutes past 8.30 is what, everybody? 8.45, my sister, you know what? I got up. I got so upset. Eh, eh. At 8.45, I pressed news and I threw the phone. I threw the phone, and then when I woke up, it was 12.45. <laughs> it was too late. Took a shower real quick, got to Brooklyn. I'm like, sir, sir. The guy said, sir, you missed your opportunity. Major financial, oh, semi-major, but uh, major financial ble blessing, and I missed the opportunity. But you know, that sounds kind of familiar for a lot of you, because a lot of you are snoozing God. Yeah. Matthew 24, Luke 21, Mark 13, he sends you the alarm clocks at the sign of the coming. But what we do, pestilences, ah, 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 snooze. Rumors of wars, ah, 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 snooze. We snooze God all the time. And God is just trying to say, I need you to stay up. Yeah. Insomnia is defined as, I just can't sleep. Oh. Insomnia is saying, listen, bro, I can't sleep. I just can't sleep. I just can't sleep. I got to stay up. I just can't sleep. Insomnia is having the inability to sleep. And Mark 13, God says, I need you to watch and pray. And when some people have been uh, 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 diagnosed with the disorder of insomnia, God is saying, I need you to be in order with insomnia. I need you to stay up. Everybody, real quick, in the interest of time, Mark, um, Romans 13, verse 11. I'm basically done. Romans 13, verse 11. The Bible says, and that knowing the what? And that knowing, and that knowing the what? And that knowing the time, that now it is what? Not just time, Kurt. Not just time, Teray. Not just Turk, um, time, Courtney. It is high time to awake out of sleep. For those who are watching online, for now is our, yours, salvation nearer than we first believed. Let me tell you something. I'm all young adults, get your 250000 a year. Get that Benz, get that Bentley, get that relationship, if, God, if it's God's will. But don't ever let it supersede your spiritual urgency for being prepared. The Bible says, what profits a man to gain the whole what? At the expense of losing your soul. God wants you to gain the whole world, but not at the expense. As Christians, we teach, oh, you got to be broke. The devil's a liar. You need to be broken. <laughs> Spiritually broken, number one. Because 3 John verse 2, thank you, Holy Spirit. 3 John verse 2, the Bible says, Beloved above, uh, beloved above all things, I wish that you prosper, that means financially, and be in good health, that means health prosperity. But here's the thing, we leave the other part. It's hinged off your spiritual prosperity. It says, even as your soul prospers. In other words, if you ain't spiritually there, you're not going to be financially or physically there. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to get mine. But are you there spiritually? Insomnia. God is saying, I need you to stay up. A lot of you are sleeping literally here today, tonight, today. And God is saying, wake up, wake up. I need you to get up. He says, watch this, you don't even know the time that the mass is coming. Stay up. But the problem is a lot of us 
are sleeping even with our eyes open. Real quick, we got to go. You. 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 Yeah, don't turn around. You. There was a young man with a hoodie today that the Lord told me just to use him today. Where are you? Don't try to hide. If you take off your hoodie, then I can't see you. (laughs) It wasn't you, but you with the white collar. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You with the white shirt. No, 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 not you, my sister. In the interest of time, can you stand right here, sir? What's your name? Curtis. Curtis? You have a girlfriend? Praise the Lord. How old are you? Number one, how old are you? Oh, you're illegal. 21, praise the Lord. In due season, you shall reap. <laughs> your, your name? Kyle. Ky- Kyle. How old are you? 18. Okay, you're not ready for a girlfriend yet. Get the money and make sure your credit score is high. Praise the Lord. And your name? Nice belt. Jaden. Jaden. Okay, praise the Lord. Now, there's three types of men. Three types of what, everybody? There is the natural man, the carnal man, and the spiritual mankind. Here's the teaching. Now, we talked about strength in numbers. That's a theme, right? Now, the natural man represents (laughs) Jay-Z. It represents those who don't know God or those who are atheists. He represents atheists. He represents agnostics. He even represents agnostics who are even in church. Hallelujah. Who come to church with eyes open, but no response, right? You represent those who don't have any relationship. They didn't have a grandmother that took them to church. They didn't have a next door neighbor that took them to Pathfinders or Little Lambs that brought them up the ranks spiritually, right? You represent the carnal man. (laughs) We come to you. And then you represent the what? Spiritual man. Revelation chapter 3, the Bible says, uh, 20, uh, Revelation chapter 3, I'm sorry, verse 20 says, he says, I wish that you were what? Cold or what? Hot, but because you're what? Lukewarm. Lukewarm, I have to throw up. And there's no amount of Pepto-Bismol spiritually for Jesus to take, so you can't keep him from throwing up because he cannot take hypocrisy. I say this all, my, all the time. This is like a, 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 a star work in my, in my, in my sermons that, that God was dealing with me in 2020, 2010, and he says, Gazmir, dealing with me, he says, Gasmir, the fastest growing religion besides Christianity and Islam is hypocrisy. The fastest growing religion. And a lot of us are unintentional members <laughs> when we speak one thing, but we do something totally different. So the spiritual mankind is the man who's praying and fasting, who's in the word. He understands that when he doesn't get things his way, uh, you know what I've discovered? That God always says yes. God always says, this is a teaching, don't forget this. He always says yes. Whether it's yes, no, not to this, but yes to something else, or wait, it's always a yes. That no that God tells you no, it's a yes for something else. Because he will never leave you stranded. So he always says yes. Yes is a yes, no is a yes, no to that girl, no to that boy, not to that job, but yes to something else. But wait is a yes too, because what you receive too early might end up being a liability than an asset. So that's why he says you need to wait. He's, wait, wait, I say, on the Lord. And I told you, a waiter does two things, take orders and serve. You may be seated, you represent the spiritual man, God bless you. Natural man. Natural man, the Bible says, you represent the cold people who don't, who don't know anything about God, but when, when the, the heat is flashed from his body spiritually to someone who's cold spiritually, you run to heat because you're cold. So God can deal with you because you're cold. You may be seated. That's why I love when God declares that God loves people despite people smoking, crack, and drinking alcohol, people who are dealing with sexuality confusion, God loves them. To the stripper who's on the pole, God says, come off the pole because I went up on the pole for you. Oh, you get that next week. He says, I deal with that. 
But what he can't deal with are Seventh-day Adventists who have a nasty heart spirit. When you read the book Steps of Christ, Servant of the Lord writes that it's the hearts in it. Those, those who are in the medical profession, it's heart disease, Dr. Green. Heart disease. Now, you can see me drink, but it's the heart evil spirit. Happy Sabbath, my sister. Nasty spirit. Why is she sitting in my seat? <laughs> and then you have the nerve to stand up. God bless me. God said, ah, it stinks. <laughs> Worship, transformation comes from a place of humility. No humility, no tranquility. Come on, sister. That's it. No, someone say, say it with me. No humility, no tranquility. Then you have this young man who's 18 years old, not ready for marriage yet, praise the Lord, but he has a high credit score. He probably makes 300000 a year. He has a Bentley and has three, six houses and four investment properties. I'm just trying to help you out. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> um, he represents the carnal man, the man who has one, or the woman, who has one foot in and one foot out. And God is saying, you're, you're, you're not even only confusing yourself, but you're confusing people outside. The Bible says, you may be seated, thank you. Romans chapter, thank you, my brother. Romans chapter 2, verse 24, thank you, Holy Spirit. The Bible says, the Bible says, for the name of the Lord is blasphemed amongst the unbelievers, the Gentiles, because of you. So when your co-workers find out you're a Ventist, you Christian? Oh, I ain't going to your church. I'm a drummer. I've been playing drums for over 20 years, played for many different artists, name it, Neil Swole, gospel artists, whatever, man. So when I was looking at the drum, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm with you, man. You're killing it. Uh, I was playing at one church, played for many bishops, you name it. I was playing at one church. I was there for serving for seven years in Brooklyn. And the pastor's wife, who I'm still connected to today, the pastor and his wife, she came up to me. I was preaching. I had the privilege of preaching at the church I played at. And my pastor, uh, Pastor Willis Reed, at that time, he came to support, amen? And um, when I was sitting there, <laughs> um, at the end we had fellowship, and she said, oh, that's your pastor, where's your pastor? I said, oh, I was, at, I was, attending, I was attending the church called Elmont Temple at that time. And she said, oh, okay, okay. And um, <laughs> let, me be, let me behave. But basically, she says, does so-and-so go to your church? I said, yeah. So-and-so is a leader in the church. And she said, he's a leader? Have mercy. The name of the Lord is blasphemed. We talk about strength in numbers. I told the first service, how can you, be, how can you have strength in numbers if you're not even in the number? Somebody say insomnia. Insomnia. God means, God wants you to, uh, to, to stay up. In Mark chapter 13, Jesus says to watch. You don't know the time he's coming. We, we know this already, but God is saying, here's the word today. God says, stay up, stay up, stay up. But here's the go. here we go. If you don't stay up, if you don't have spiritual insomnia, if you, if you say, yes, I can't sleep, right? God doesn't want you to sleep. If you don't, you will experience many other types of spiritual sleeping disorder. The first kind of sleeping disorders is called narcolepsy. Narcolepsy is, I have to read it. Narcolepsy is sleep paralysis, accessible, un uncontrollable daytime drowsiness and sleepiness. Cataplexy is sudden, temporary, or could be uh, um, exter um, 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 prolonged loss of muscles and movement. So if you ever seen somebody, Dr. Green, correct me if I'm wrong, or any other doctors here, please. I'm not a medical professional, but correct me. But in my little research, narcolepsy is so bad that you could be walking and fall asleep. And it could become fatal, especially if you're in New York City at the train station. You're listening to music, oh, and you're at the edge. It says, don't stand past the yellow line, but you don't want to listen. And the train comes, eh, boom, you're done. Narcolepsy is when you have sudden sleepiness. And sudden sleepiness can become fatal. 
Some of you in here are spiritually narcoleptics. Doom. They call for prayer. Doom. They call for fasting. Doom. They call for prayer. You can't even pray for three minutes. My knees hurt, but you're talking to your friends for five hours. Oh, girl, you should have saw what she said. <laughs> it shows that there's a spiritual anorexia going on. You're not spiritually, mal you're spiritually malnourished. The other type of sleeping disorder, we don't have much time at all, is hypersomnia. Hypersomnia is excessive sleepiness. Well, you're not, you're, not only fall, you're not really falling into sleep. You're actually sleeping for too long. To the point where you're, nobody can wake you up. What does that mean, mama, spiritually? There are people in here today who are spiritual hyposomnia people who just are spiritually numb. Somebody will come up here and share, God delivered me from cancer. You're like a, a, a walking mausoleum. You're a walking cemetery. It doesn't affect you. Person worship is singing, you've been so good. And I begin to cry because I look at the year that I had. I lost my grandmother in August. Three weeks later, my great aunt. Two weeks later, my uncle, her, her, her son. All in one year. And I'm crying. And I'm saying, God, I could have been there. But you've been so good. You've been better than good. Chicken is good. I mean, ve veggie chicken is good. Amen. But Jesus is great. Hallelujah. <laughs> you've been great to me. But hypersomnia is sleeping where you're spiritually numb. Nothing affects you anymore. You come to the church, you can't even stand up and worship the Lord. Now, don't get me wrong. There's different types of worship. Some people sit down and they, they contemplate. That's okay. But don't do that and go to a soccer game and say, my God, yeah, my, yeah, my. Kick it, kick it, kick it, kick it. They do that all the time. They sit in church like this. But when they go to a game, yes, yes, man, yes, man. Be the same way you in church, outside. But if you sit at a soccer game and you're like, yes, man, and you do the same thing in church, praise the Lord. <laughs> so narcolepsy, we don't have much time. Number two is hypersomnia, but there's something called sleep apnea. Yeah. Now this one, my sister, is very serious because if you continue to experience hypersomnia and continue to sleep, Sleep apnea is when you're sleeping and you're in and out of breath. <sighs> but if you prolong in that state, you might end up losing your breath forever. There are many people who have died because of sleep apnea. Narcolepsy, hyposomnia, and sleep apnea, which are spiritual, these are Literal sleep disorders, but in the spiritual context, God is saying, I need you to have insomnia. I need you to stay up. You can't sleep. Church of the Oranges, Allegheny East, people online, you cannot afford to sleep. You need to stay. I, I just can't sleep. I got to stay up. My Savior's coming. I got to stay up. I can't sleep. I have insomnia. And God says, yes, that's good. Yes, don't sleep. Because Jesus is not sleeping. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah that God, he who keepeth his, um, keep his Israel um, um, doesn't sleep or slumber. If God even just yawned for a second, his whole world would be done. He can't sleep. He's interceding on your behalf. You ju he just can't sleep. You're always on God's mind. He can't sleep. And God is saying, can you do that for me? Can he be always on your mind that you can't spiritually sleep? If not, you will be a narcoleptic. You have sleep apne apnea, and you will be hyper. You have hypersomnia. Now, here's the question as I'm done. How do you stay up? My advice to you, if you take it, I'm just a paralegal. He's the attorney. If you could just take a cup of Jesus. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 34, it says, taste and see that the what? And family, he is sweet. If you took a cup of Jesus every day, 
Not coffee. <laughs> Jesus, you stay up. But how do you stay up? You can play my brother. Amen. John chapter 8, verse 31, the Bible says, If you are my disciple, continue in my word. So the first way of staying up is to continue. See, my sister, there's some people who have never started. But people who come to church, you need to continue. If, and I'm learning, I'm still fresh in my marriage. But if I cease to do what I did to get my wife, that means I didn't continue. You know what I'm talking about. The second thing real quick is to continue in prayer. Colossians chapter 4 verse 2. Paul, ad Paul admonishes us to continue in what everybody? To pray. The last one, well, third one is this. The last one, I'll tell you, is to continue with and in the faith. Somebody say continue with faith. Colossians 1, verse 23. Here's the last one. It's what you're doing. And that is fast. I praise God for the fact that you guys are getting ready to go into. Fasting is a very serious thing. It's a spiritual detox. But here's the thing. We experience spiritual narcolepsy, uh, sleep apnea, in uh, hyperinsomnia, why? Because when the pastor calls for fasting, <laughs> God says, read your word. Nah, I'll turn on the TV. He says, turn on the plate, I'll go get a cheeseburger. We do what we want when we want, but we ex expect blessings from God. God is not a cheap thrill. God should never be your side piece. God is not a resource. Get that through your head. I'm learning that myself. Family, he's not a resource. You know why? Many years I've treated him as a resource. He is the source. He is my faith. That's why I believe with all my heart that faith does not bring victory. You know why? Faith is the victory that overcomes hey, hey, the world. It, it, it just transforms your life. So how do you stay up? Grab a cup of Jesus, pour it in the morning, every morning, every afternoon, every evening, evening, and continue in my word, continue in prayer, continue in faith, and continue by fasting. Now with strength in numbers, here we go. Imagine you're in the car, and you're driving, and you have three other friends, one in the passenger, two in the back, who do not know who God is and you're driving them, you're the only one from the Church of the Armages, from Allegheny East, from Northeastern, from any church, and you're the only one driving, and you fall asleep. That means other people who were in the car with you will end up dying because of you, because you fell asleep. I just told you, you know where to go. You know the way. They don't know the way. Your co-workers don't know the way. Some of them don't. Your neighbors are watching you, and some of them don't know the way. You know the way, and God is saying, if you fall asleep, you put them at a high, at a high risk of dying with you. And I was talking to my wife about this this week. It's one thing for you to sin by yourself. But when you call somebody else to sin, God gets upset. God's like, nah, man, I'm a wall out on you now because you call somebody else. You have spiritually abused them. So somebody online, somewhere, I don't know where you are. I'm letting you know that if you're falling asleep and you know how to drive, because you went to God's driving school, the word, you went to church, you know how to drive, you, you've been connecting with his GPS and you fell asleep because of narcolepsy or insomnia, I mean, um, hyperinsomnia or sleep apnea, and you cause other people to die, you are at fault. From every preacher from the pulpit who falls asleep, because Ezekiel says, woe unto the pastors who feed themselves. Not only us, 
You guys too. You know, pastors like, great pastors like Dr. Leaf Cook, and he's one of the 10 I was telling you about. I didn't even know he was going to come here. But him, I, don't, I know him a little bit. I don't know him like that. But there's a lot of guys I respect from afar that I never had a chance to talk to. But him, Dr. Jules, Dr. Warner Richards from Linden, Dr. Stoddard. I mean, there's a couple of them. Dr. James Doggett. There's a couple of them. Let me tell you something. Your pastor here is a shepherd. He is not, he's a sheep too, but he's a shepherd. Sheep make sheep. Shepherds can't make sheep. That's called bestiality. Oh, come on. So when I sat there with my wife during the 13th Sabbath thing and I looked up on that, I said, that's amazing. That means if every member met one person, you have grown this church 100%. Sheep make sheep. So shepherds, our responsibility is to shepherd you. We're sheep too, but to shepherd you. So how do you have strength in numbers? Empowered by the Holy Spirit, each leading one person to Christ through baptism. Why? Because there will be no starless crowns in the kingdom. So God's saying, I need you to stay up, watch and pray. Listen, I don't care what 45 is doing. I don't care. I don't care. He's doing what he has to do. Listen, do you know how powerful the Lord can send 45 here to get baptized? If Nebuchadnezzar could be saved. I mean, he got the vision in Daniel chapter 2 and had the nerve to create something in Daniel chapter 3. I mean, pride, but he still got saved. God can save anyone. A lot of Adventists go in the first class to hell. The Baptists and the Pentecostals, they worship on the wrong day. Okay, yes. But there are a lot of people who are Christians who are Pentecostals and Baptists. I have a lot of friends who I will submit my life to because they're Christians behind the pulpit and off the drums and off the keys. But there's some Adventist people that I just, I'm good. What I love about Romans chapter 3 is whether you're Adventist or Baptist or Pentecostal, we are all under sin. But we don't have to stay there. Victory is available only through Jesus. Everybody, eyes closed, heads bowed. There's somebody here, even with your heads bowed and eyes closed, you're experiencing spiritual narcolepsy, spiritual ap um, sleep apnea, and spiritual hypothalamia. Uh, um, and God is saying, I need you to stay up. Some of you are, are spiritually yawning. And you know what spiritual yawning is? It's being tempted and not doing it, but mentally receiving it. That's a spiritual yawn. Some of you are even experiencing spiritual napping. You're not totally sleeping for too long, or you're not yawning, but you're taking a nap. That means you're indulging in certain things that you shouldn't be. And we know, obviously, spiritual sleep is spiritual sleep. So it's not just time, but it's high time to wake up. So somebody here today, for the first time, you want to say, Lord, I need to stay up. I need to have spiritual insomnia. I heard your voice, Father. I want a cup of Jesus every moment of my life. I want to stay up. If you're here today, I want you to stand up. If you're here, if you're here, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. If you're here, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. If you're here, don't stand up because somebody else stood up. You cannot be saved of somebody else's credit score spiritually. Because in fact, all of our credit score spiritually is off. Jesus is the only one who could co-sign for us. Where are you? Are you here today? Stand up. Don't, don't listen. If you're wrestling, if you feel like a little bubbly in your stomach, you're not hungry, that is the Spirit of God saying you need to stand up. And I want to even invite, invite someone to come to the front if you're here. Say, Lord, I just, I don't want to sleep anymore. <laughs> I want to stay up. I, I want to stay up. If you're here, come down. I'll come get you. Raise your hand. I'll come get you. Raise your hand. Come get you. Don't, see, if Christ is, if you're used to Jesus, that means you are sleeping. You should never be used to Jesus. You, you must have a fresh experience every day. 
What blows my mind is you have people who are, are crack dealers and crackheads and strippers and prostitutes who come to church and then they, they have fired more fire than those who've been in the church for 30 years because they experience being awakened. If you're here today, raise your hand. You could be in the church for 40 years, and I make this call, call to even pastors and elders. You could be an elder of this church. A position will not save you, please. If you're here today, you've never given your life to Jesus. Never give your life to Jesus. 30 years. Don't worry about what the church says. Listen, a lot of people are going to hell because you worry about how people think about you. Stop. There's no heaven or hell they can put you in. I'm totally free from that. You know why? Because the only person that can break me is me. I look at you and I smile. I say, God bless you. And I walk away in full confidence because you can't break me. Nobody in this church could break me. Only I can break myself. If you're here today, if you're here today, if you're here today, where are you? When I come up to the front, if you want, raise your hand, I'll come get you. I want to say, Lord, I just want to, I don't want to sleep anymore. I want to, I'm going to have a cup of Jesus every moment of my life. If you're here today, come, come. I'll come get you. Raise your hand. Come. No more time anymore, but come, come. God is saying, I want you to have spiritual insomnia. Come, come, come. This is the best part of the service. This is when you come to Jesus. You know what blows my mind? People will run up if I told you I had two tickets backstage for Beyonce to spend six hours with her. You're going to push somebody. I'm going to get mine. But when I invite you to Jesus, people are, 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 are negligent to do so. Listen, I know people who drive without seatbelts but won't trust Jesus. People have unprotected, int false intimacy with people but won't trust Jesus. Where are you? I'll come get you. Raise your hand. You know why? Because there's strength in numbers. I'll come get you. I won't leave you there. Where are you? I'll come get you. I'll be God's paralegal. I have your back. Come here. Raise your hand. Where are you? Where are you? I'll come get you. If you want to say, Lord, I want to give my life to you. I want to stay up. I want to have spiritual insomnia. I can't sleep. Where are you? Come, 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 come. Come, come now. Come now. Remember the price is right? When they called your name and you knew you were getting $30,000, you were running down. The price has always been right. He died for you. Where are you? Listen, I'm not calling you to be a number. Oh, we baptized 10,000. No, no, no. You are a precious soul. You're not a statistic. Where are you? Come. Raise your hand. I'll come get you. Come. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. Come. Come, come, come. Come. Come, come. Don't fight it. Come, come. God sing, stay up. <laughs> I can't sleep. I can't sleep. Insomnia, I, I, I just can't sleep. I need to have the spiritual inability to sleep. Where are you? Come. Okay. Let's pray. Dr. Green, would you give me honor or, or come and pray? It's okay. Anybody stand up, please? Dr. Green's gonna pray. In fact, hold a person's hands next to you as we pray. Thank you. And before we pray, let's just sing that song. I give myself yes. away. Let's. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just let's just sing that together. I give myself away. So.
hand up just raise your hand up put your hands up everybody one more time I give myself father God we we're in your presence. And in your presence, Lord, we know there is fullness of joy. Yeah. There's nothing that we need that you're not ready and able to provide. Yes. We lift our hands up, Lord, waiting for you to give to us that which we need. Yes. Yes. Above all, Lord, what we need most is spiritual discernment. We need, oh God, to be watchful and looking for your soon coming. Yes. There's so many distractions, so many things that would take our minds and our hearts away. Yes. Help us, oh God, as we've heard this word today. Help us, oh Lord, to be ever vigilant, mm. to be sober, mm. to keep our eyes fixed yes. towards heaven. May we not sleep, O oh God. Yes. May we be wide awake all the time, ever watchful and waiting and looking for your glorious return. Yes. There's somebody here today, Lord, who who's kind of fallen asleep. Mm. Somebody here today, Lord, who's kind of like gotten all complacent and just kind of going through the routine. Mm. We thank you for the word today that reminds us that this is not time to sleep. This is high time. Whatever you've got to do to wake us up, do that. Whatever situation you've got to put us through to wake us up, do that. Whatever trial and difficulty you've got to let us experience to wake us up, do that. So that when you return, Lord, every single one of us here will be saved in your kingdom we thank you for your word we thank you for the messenger of that word we pray that you'll continue to bless his ministry and his family and continue to bless this church and its leadership and above all the young people in it so that when you come again when the saints go marching in May every one of us be in that number. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus name, amen. Let everybody declare, amen, amen and amen. Bless you, Doctor. Bless you, sir. God bless you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise Happy Sabbath, church. Thank you, Pastor, for allowing the Holy Spirit to use you and to remind us that it is high time to wake up from our sleep. Around three months or a couple months ago, I was unemployed. And I remember saying to God, I said, God, if you allow me to get a job, my first paycheck, I return everything to you. A few days later, I got a, a voicemail from my loan repayment uh, people. They said, Dr. Reed, uh, please give us a call back. We want to talk about your loan repayment plans. Um, I said to God, 
Uh, God, if you let me get a job, I'll return half of my check to you. Uh, a few days later, uh, the bills start coming in. My bank account start going down. And I said to God, if, if you let me get a job, I'll just return my, my tithes and offering. And so the great God of heaven gave me a job at Cornell. Amen. Amen. So he saw it fit to give me a job and everything was going well. Then in September, September is when all the medical students or past graduates who are applying for residency turn in their application for residency. And so I turned in my application and a few weeks passed by, I heard nothing from any of the hospitals that I've applied to. So I called a few of my friends and they said, oh yeah, I heard back from such and such places. And here I was, jobless, well, I actually had a job, but here I was trying to get a job for residency and I uh, heard nothing back. So I remembered, I prayed, and while I was praying, the Holy Spirit reminded me and said, have you paid your tithes and offering? And so I got up from the prayer and I took up my computer and I returned my tithes and offering. In the span of eight hours, that following morning, when I checked my email, I had five hospitals replying to me, said, we want to interview you for a job. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't want to be misquoted saying that God will only bless you if you return your tithes and offering. After all, he says, he make it rain on the just and on the unjust. But there are certain blessings that you can only get when you return a faithful tithe and offering to God. Amen. So as the deacons and deaconess come forward, uh, please keep in mind the several ways that you can give. If you have cash, you can return it in this um, envelope. If you're tech savvy, you can use your cell phone and text COTO, give to 55469 or you can use the internet as well. If you have a debit card or a credit card, you can go to the church office and make your donations to God's work. Let us pray. Oh, one more thing. To our first time guests, uh, thank you for coming to the Church of the Oranges again. Uh, please fill out your communication cards and return them to the ushers or one of the deacons or deaconess. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for life and strength. As we, your people, return a portion of what you have blessed us with, I pray that our, bless, well, our offering may be a sweet savor to you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
I'll travel near or far for your glory. I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my King for your glory. I will do. all the tithes in the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. also like to announce that there will be lunch served upstairs in the fellowship hall and for all those who are interested in joining OC Square there will be a meeting by the band after the service. Thank you.